I appreciate um, Brother Adi allowing me for just maybe two months. I might have another one or two uh, presentations uh, to establish some of the important doctrines of the church. Some of them had been neglected in the last um, few decades, unfortunately. And because they are written black on a white in our scriptures, they're as important as the major ones. We've listened tonight uh, to Brother Adi, uh, brilliant uh, challenge that we do not neglect anything pertaining to repentance, pertaining to the teachings of the gospel, lest we are going to find ourselves short of reaching the kingdom of God. So, what about tonight? I don't have a PowerPoint presentation because I didn't want to show any images uh, related to what I'm going to speak about. Tattoos and piercings. There is a fascination nowadays uh, in the young generation. And... Um, I want you to get the biblical teaching about it because a lot of people wrongly assume that the Bible is silent when it comes to tattoos and piercings. And the young generation is most vulnerable because of the way they are presented in this society, very permissive society. I heard about parents that would allow their children to get tattoos on the condition that they're allowed to partake in that experience. Hey, you can get a tattoo, but I want to be there. I want to be there with you and share that experience together. As yes, the Bible has something to say directly and indirectly about this, and um, I'm going to have a few perspectives on tattoos and piercings. First of all, the source and the reasons. Where does this come from? And why are they doing it? See, a lot of things pertaining to our lives are a matter of where did we get it from and why are we doing it? And make no mistake about it, God is very interested in the motivation of your heart. To the point where sometimes you can even do something good, but because of the wrong motivations or the wrong motives, it will be considered tainted and unacceptable. So, the source of tattoos and piercings are in pagan cultures and civilizations. It had never originated with a patriarch, with a holy person, with the men of God or with the people of God. As a matter of fact, because in those cultures, tattooing and piercing were rampant and people would do that to their bodies, God had commanded his people in Leviticus 19.28. Leviticus 19.28. Help me out there. And it says, You shall not make any cunnings in your flesh for the dead, nor tattoo any 
marks on you. I am the Lord. This was a commandment for the people of Israel. Why? What was the vulnerability? It was embracing customs. And traditions from the pagan cultures and pagan religions. Now, um, you have to understand that in the world, all these are acts of rebellion against God. God had created us as we are. Um, I remember somebody saying about smoking that if God would have considered that normal, um, he would have built a chimney on our heads. Um, you see, the body, the beauty of human body is not supposed to be mutilated and embedded with any symbols. Nowadays, we have a culture in which, a Christian culture, in which they say, oh yeah, we, we are going to tattoo some verses from the Bible. Uh, we are going to tattoo some crosses on our bodies. God never needed pagan cultures to tell us how we should live our Christian lives. Do you remember when the people of Israel wanted to move the Ark of the Covenant from a field to the house of David? And the men charged with keeping track of the, the Ark as it was transported in a very nice procession he died because he touched the ark. And he wanted to prevent it from overturning. And David asked, why had God allowed this tragedy to happen today? And later on he said, you know what? Because we did not follow God's commandments on how we transport the Ark of the Covenant. Where did they get the model? From the Philistines, when it was captured during, during uh, the reign of uh, Judge Eli. The Philistines were cursed because of the Ark of the Covenant. They sent it back. And David and the people of Israel used the same method as the Philistines did. Now God never punished the Philistines because they didn't have the commandments of the law. They didn't know how to transport the ark. But in Israel it was common that every single time the ark of the covenant would be carried, it would be on the shoulders of the Levites. They would carry the holy instruments of worship from the temple earlier from the tent or the tabernacle. So everything that comes from the world, it is a sign of rebellion, rebellion against how God created us. Permanent marking of our body is a sign of rebellion and it is inspired by Satan. And sometimes the people of God are vulnerable to this. Look at what, because it's, it's false spirituality. It is a cult. It is a worship. Do you remember when the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel confronted Elijah? And Elijah told them, hey, ask your God to send fire. You know what happened? 
they cut, they made cuts on themselves to get the favor of their God. This is a pagan custom. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. My young friends, I have absolutely no idea in this world how you can honor God tattooing your body. But I know for sure how you can honor God respecting him as your creator. The way he, he created you. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Romans 12 1. I appeal or I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service you cannot impress God with anything else your body is not going to be acceptable in worship because you put tattoos piercings or anything like that on your body the requirements are simple holy that's how you honor God God is not impressed with your 316 tattoo or Romans 5 8 because the Bible says that he had wrote his commandments and he embedded his commandments if you want he printed his commandments on your heart that's good enough that's when where you need them so this is about the source and the reasons it is worldly it is false worship it is a cult it is pagan and it is a rebellion, an act of rebellion against God. So that's the source and the reason. Secondly, the mutilation and the permanence of tattoos and piercings. I was very prudent throughout my life with things that cannot be undone. Now, I know technology is very advanced, and we have laser uh, erasers, but they're very painful, they're very expensive, and uh, it's not perfect. Uh, you're going to have some lesions there. Uh, it, you cannot correct it completely. It's not going to be that obvious. But it's still a permanent marking on the body. And it is mutilation of the body. See, the looks and aesthetics of it, every single time I look at the person who has all kinds of tattoos, uh, it, whenever I see somebody in pain, I, this is a problem that I have. If I see somebody in pain, I feel like a knife stabbing here every single time. Whether I watch a video, whether I watch a person that is in pain, I immediately feel a stabbing here. Do you know that every single time I see a tattoo on somebody, I feel that pain? It's painful to watch them. 
all over the place, on their necks, on their chests, on their arms, on their fingers, on their faces, on their foreheads. Doesn't look good. It looks awful. And you might say, no, um, I'm going to have a very small one somewhere with the name of somebody that I love. Now, I, heard, I heard about that too. And some people had to erase it lest they wouldn't have any other relationship ever in their lives. Because relationships are temporary, especially with these kinds of people. But, let me bring another perspective. You are at an age where you are not set in your ways. Most people that get tattoos are young people. And when you are young, you are very easy to be influenced and to do something permanent that you might regret later. I'm very careful with things that cannot be undone or easily undone. I'm very careful in my life. I'm very careful in the church. Um, I've been asked once, hey, you, you seem like a very open-minded person. Little do they know, but uh, I won't say I'm close-minded. But it's not necessarily because I see something in other churches that is sinful or that is inter it's, it's forbidden by the Bible. But I'll tell you why. Because I want to take my time and to look at the results, to look at the consequences, long-term consequences of adopting some new styles. The, the easier thing is to say to the people, hey, from now on, let's do it this way. But I'm not comfortable with that. I want to look at a lot of churches that have done it and see how they benefited from it. Or maybe they did. That's why at a young age, when you don't have experience, or you're mesmerized by a lot of important people that do that, don't do it. Before your mind gets settled, before your emotions are not coming in such waves, and driving you to do foolish things. Look at what it says in Romans 14.23. Romans 14.23. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not from faith is Sin. It's like the other verse where it says, whatever you do, honor God with it. So specifically here it talks about eating something. But then it expands the perspective. And it says, whatever you do, and it's not coming from faith. Being sure. Being absolutely sure. Being convinced. Having no doubts. Well, that's why I say, be careful with mutilation of your body and uh, permanent markings. I've, I've seen 70 years old people, and it looks awful. It, it, for me, it looks awful when the person is young, but when it it, uh, 
uh, when you see tattoos on an older person, it's, it's downright disgusting. Because the mutilation is mutilated. And you have double mutilation. I said once, be careful what names you give to your children. In Romania, there was a custom somewhere sometime in the 60s, 70s, because they loved those babies so much, and they gave them name of babies. Mugurel, Bombonel, Floricel, Mititel. It was okay. But take the baby in your hands and say, Mugurel, wonderful. Uh, Mugurel amplinit patrus de ani. He was 40 years old. And he said, fratele Mugurel cântă o cântare. Ghiocel, Zambilica, și așa mai departe. Doesn't sound good, right? Doesn't sound good. Listen. We have an obsession with things that seem good at the moment. Don't ever trust your instinct when it shows you the benefits of the moment. I'm going to belong. My friends all got a tattoo. I got to have one to impress them. Hey, let me show it to you. I have it here and I have it there. And it seems like you are interesting for about five minutes. No. Be careful with the mutilation of your body and the permanence of it. Three, the style or the image and the crowd. Look in this world, who does these things? Because the Bible says that we need the image of God embedded in our lives. We need to carry the image of God in our lives. There are two images in this world, the image of God, which repenters, People of faith carry through their behavior, deeds, acts, words. And then there's the image of the, of the world, the way they dress, the way they tattoo themselves. And be careful, because these are celebrities. Where are most celebrities going to end up? I'm 100% sure that just to be sure, 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
And do not be confirmed, don't imitate to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There are those two images to which one you conform. Four, possession and permission. You know that a lot of young people can barely wait to be 18 or I don't know, what, what is the age where you do whatever you want? In this country? I, I'm, I'm afraid now they're lowering the age where you cannot tell children what to do or what not to do when they're in kindergarten. That's how uh, abusive this government had become. Taking away our rights when it comes to our toddlers. God forbid. And um, they don't like the idea that he's your child or she's your child. That's why they invented the concept, it takes a village. It's our child. And uh, daddy government uh, loves children. Quote marks. Loves to influence children, to own our children. And for that purpose, little by little, they're taking them away from us, from our authority. But let me ask you, who has the deed of property over your body? Because you cannot do with that body anything other than the owner would allow. You need to ask, who is the owner? And then ask for permission. The owner says, yes, then you do it. If the owner says, no, you don't do it. Now let's see who the owner is. Deuteronomy 14.1. You are the children of the Lord, your God. You shall not cut yourselves nor shave the front of your head for the dead, because it was a pagan ritual for the dead. This is where they took it from. This was the source. So in the Old Testament, they are the children of God, and he has property rights over their bodies and they cannot do whatever they want with their body and God forbids cutting yourself or shaving the front of your head for the dead first Corinthians 6 19 and 20 first Corinthians 6 19 and 20 or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. So my question to you is, if you are not your own, can you make a decision to create something permanent on your body without the owner's consent? The answer is absolutely no. No way. You are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. He's the owner of your whole being. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are the temple of God and then the Spirit of God dwells in you? 1 Corinthians 3.16 tells us that the Spirit dwells in us not as a guest 
but as the owner. So we want to get a tattoo. Send the request to the Holy Spirit. See what the Holy Spirit does. Don't even ask your parents before you ask the Holy Spirit. And I'm not demeaning and diminishing the authority of your parents. Because even if you lie and say the Holy Spirit told you to get a tattoo, you're still under the authority of your parents. And your parents has a say of what not to do with your bodies. But let me know if you get approval from the Holy Spirit, because that, that'll be the day. That'll be the day. Fifth. I already had my body tattooed or pierced. I feel condemned. I feel bad about it, but I've already done it. It's done. Well, If you, when you repented, you've already had tattoos on your body, God does not count the times of ignorance. I hope that the tattoo is not that obvious and at least support the no tattoos and no piercing policy in our church. But yes, God can save you if you have tattoos on your body and you come to Christ and you repent and you ask for forgiveness and no matter where you have them, cover them up and embrace our policy of zero tolerance for tattoos and piercings. Somebody will say, well, I've been raised in a Christian family. I believe in Jesus. Maybe you were baptized, and out of rebellion, you did it, and now you regret it. Repentance does it. Sincere repentance will get you forgiveness. Just don't do it anymore. Don't boast about it. Don't show off. Cover it as much as you can. If you have some money, you raise it, hide it. And um, again, support us in the no tattoos, no piercings policy. And lastly, what if I don't believe like you? I still don't believe like you. I don't care about your arguments. Because so-and-so preacher, he preaches so good, he's so filled with the Holy Spirit. And he has tattoos. And so many Christians have tattoos. And what are you saying? They're all going to be thrown in hell? I don't believe it. Well, if you're part of this church and you don't believe it, all right. No serving on this platform. Because this is a privilege. This is not a right. And we have some principles that we apply to it. If you have a tattoo and you've repented and you are repentful and you cover it and you believe what we say here, then it's okay. But if you are rebellious and you say to your colleague next and right, no, he, he, he's not right about it, um, take a seat there. You are not allowed to serve here if you believe in tattoos and you have tattoos. It's so simple. And we do not tolerate defiance. Because defiance is an act of Satan. And people that are defiant to the authority of a church are not of God. I'll give you two simple verses. 1 Corinthians 14, 38. 
But if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant. Because I will tell you what the ignorant does, and it's not ignorance as much as it, 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 as it is disobedience and defiance. They will never be satisfied with any arguments. They will always ask for more. They'll say, it's not enough. Say more about it. I have had seven points tonight, and uh, they, they say it should have been eight, it should have been 10, my friends. At some point, I've done all I could with all the Bible that I know. And if you choose to be ignorant, then the Bible says, it's okay. Be ignorant. Purposefully ignorant. But then there's something else. 1 Corinthians 11, 16. 1 Corinthians 11, 16. But if anyone seems to be contentious, fighting back, talking back, arguing against the principles of the scripture, we have no such custom, nor do the churches of God. You know what that means? This is the rule of the church, no tattoos and no piercings. And that's that. End of discussion. And you might say, dictatorship. No, it's not. I'm just a custodian of the word of God and of God's commandments. That's it. But I'm a fierce custodian of his principles. And at some point, I will politely, as nicely as I can, tell you, go take it up with God. I've said everything that I could say. I don't know anything else that I could say. I'm done. I'm at the end. I have no more knowledge. I have no more wisdom than what I read to you and what I told you. But I believe this is God's word, this is God's principles, and I am ending the discussion right here. Take it up with God, or I hope not, I hope you repent, because we're going to give you love. We're going to understand you. I don't have a problem with people that have fallen at some point into some sin, into some... spiritual problems. I don't like defiance and disobedience. People that come and repent and capitulate in front of the love of Christ, I love them a lot. I admire them a lot. They treasure their salvation more than their image and their ego. So, Are we okay? Huh? It's okay? All right. No, no, that's okay. All right. Are we okay? Please don't do it. Don't do it. I'll tell you when to do it. Do it tomorrow. Never do it today. Whatever bad idea you have in life, whatever bad idea you have, you know, pastors can have bad ideas too. Quite a few times I had the idea of resigning. But at the beginning, 37 years ago, I decided that unless the God gets rid of me or the church gets rid of me, I will resign, but never today. Always tomorrow. And this is how you should do when you are not in faith, when you have doubts about anything in life. I'm not, I'm not even talking about tattoos, piercing, anything in life. When you have doubts, stop and wait. Stop and wait again. 
Because if you are a child of God, the Holy Spirit will come soon enough. Speak to your heart. Don't do anything in haste. Be patient. And the Lord will speak to your heart 